Using algebraic methods to solve linear systems. Our objective is to solve systems of equations by substitution and elimination. Who uses this? Zookeepers use algebraic methods to solve systems of linear equations that model mixtures of animal foods. Let's start with solving linear systems by substitution. So when you're substituting, you're taking a value of what it's equivalent to and substituting it or replacing it for its equivalent value. So for example, y equals x plus 2. Well, y equals this whole quantity right here. So if it's like saying y equaled 5. If y equaled 5, you could place 5 in for y. Well, y has an expression, so x plus 2, but you can still replace y with x plus 2. So when we substitute that in, we end up with x plus, the quantity x plus 2, equals 8. So now we can solve for x. So let's start by combining like terms. So we have 2x plus 2 equals 8. And now we solve. So subtract 2 from both sides, leaving us with 2x equals 6. And divide by 2, which means x equals 3. Once you have one value, all of your solutions to systems of equations are going to be either a coordinate with two points or three points if you're solving a system of linear equations with three variables instead of just two. So now we can plug that back in. So we have y equals three plus two as we substituted our three in for x. So therefore, y equals 5. And when you finish, your answer will look as such. Take a moment and try this next one on your own. Hint, you may need to solve for y or get one of the variables by itself first. Now that you've had a chance to try it on your own, let's try it together. So let's look at this first equation. We're going to get y by itself, so that way we have a value to substitute in. So we have 2x plus y equals 6, and we're going to subtract 2x from both sides, because we want to get y by itself. So y equals, they're not like terms, so keep them separate. And now we can substitute this quantity in for y, because that quantity is equivalent to y. So we now have negative 2x plus 6 minus 8x equals 1. And similar to what we did in the last problem, combine some like terms. So we have negative 10x plus 6 equals 1, subtract 6 from both sides, leaving us with negative 10x equals negative 5, and then we can divide by negative 10 on both sides, leaving us with x equals positive 1 half. Well, there's your x value, so now you need your y value, because you need an xy coordinate. All right, so changing colors, we're going to substitute that value in. So we have 2 times 1 half plus y equals 6. If we simplify, half of 2 is 1, so we have 1 plus y equals 6, so y must equal 5. So our end solution is going to be 1 half, 5. For our xy coordinate. All right, well now let's try solving linear systems by elimination. So when you're trying to do things with elimination, your goal is to eliminate one variable. 
So we're going to use the question or the equations as though they're done vertically for an addition or subtraction problem. All right, so if we look at our two equations, look for things that are the same. So that's your step one. All right, two and four, not so much. Well, how about the coefficients for three and, or we have three and negative three. They're very similar. How would we get rid of them? Would we add them together or would we subtract them to make it so that the y's are eliminated? Well, they're different, so if you add them together, they're going to go away because 3y plus negative 3y is 0y. Well, since you've added those, you've got to add everything else. So now we have 6x plus 0y equals 30. Well, 0y is pretty much meaningless, so we can just get rid of it. So we now have 6x equals 30. We can divide both sides by 6, leaving us with x equals 5. And now we revert back to the same exact thing you were doing for the previous two problems. Once you have one variable, you can just substitute that in and find your other one. So in this case, we'll have 2 times 5 plus 3y equals 35. Alright, so we have 10 plus 3y equals 34. Subtract 10 from both sides, so we have 3y equals 24, so y equals 8. So your end solution is 5, 8. Remember to always keep your end solution as a coordinate, because if you recall back to when we were graphing, it was where the two lines intersected, and where they intersect is a point or a coordinate. So even if we're just solving algebraically, your solution is still a coordinate. All right, so recap. All we did differently was we used elimination. Once we had one variable, we followed the same pattern that we did for our first two examples. So to do elimination, Find some way of getting rid of a set of variables. If they're not, if you don't have anything that's the same, you might have to do something else. So let's take a look. So in B, we have 2 and 3 as a coefficient, and then 4 and 3 as the coefficients for y. Keep in mind, to be able to do this, the other thing is, you want to make sure your x's and your y's line up, and then your constant values are on the other side of the equal sign. So make sure it looks like that before you go about doing this. However, you don't have any common values, so we have to make that happen. So what can we multiply each of these equations by so that that way we have values that are the same? There are a couple different ways we can do this, but well, I like getting the getting rid of the x's, generally speaking, so why don't we go that route? So if we multiply our top equation by 3 and our bottom equation by 2, we now end up with 6x plus 12y equals negative 30. And for the second equation, we end up with 6x plus 6y equals negative 6. So now we need to decide whether we're going to add or subtract to eliminate one set of variables. Well, our 6s are the same here, but if we add them, we're going to get 12. We want 0x. So we would need to subtract them to get 0x. So now those are gone, and we now subtract the rest of the equations. So we end up with 6y equals, and now we have negative 30 minus negative 6. So that's like saying negative 30 plus 6, which is negative 24. So therefore, y must equal negative 4.
So same as before, once you have one variable, just substitute it in and get the other. So changing colors, we now have 2x plus 4 times negative 4 equals negative 10. So we have 2x minus 16 equals negative 10. And if we add 16 to both sides, we end up with 6. And divide by 2, x must equal 3. So in the end, you end up with 3, negative 4. One other thing, make sure it's an xy coordinate. A lot of times when people find the y variable first, they accidentally write it first in the coordinate. It's still an xy coordinate no matter which variable you solve for first. So, be mindful. Alright, so let's try classifying systems with infinitely many or no solutions. Let's start with finding some way of solving for one of the variables. Well, in this case, you it's going to be easier to use substitution than elimination because y doesn't have any coefficient. When you have a variable that kind of stands alone with no coefficient other than 1, it's going to be easier to use substitution, so follow that method instead. So if we want y by itself, we end up with y equals negative 2x plus 8. And now we must substitute that in for y. So we have 6x plus 3 times negative 2x plus 8 equals negative 15. And now we start to solve for x. So we need to distribute because we have a value immediately outside of our parentheses. It's a positive 3. So we keep our 6x and then we have minus 6x plus 24 equals negative 15. All right, so let's combine like terms. So negative 6 and 6 make nothing. So we have 24 equals negative 15. Last time I checked, 24 does not equal negative 15, so therefore, no solution. All right, so let's look at a zoology application. So we want to mix food for a prairie dog so that the feed has the right amount of protein. Feed A has 12% protein and feed B has 5% protein. We need the mix to be 100 pounds in total and have 8% protein. So you're going to need two equations. So one equation deals with the fact that feed A plus feed B must total 100 pounds. And your second equation is going to deal with your percentages. So 0.12 of feed A, so 12% of feed A, and feed B has 5% protein, and we need 8% protein altogether. So once you have your system of equations for these two problems here, you can now use substitution to solve. So take a moment and try to use substitution and solve. When you return, the answer will be revealed. All right, so we solved for B. We got B by itself, and we have 100 minus A. We substituted that in, and then we distributed our 0 0.05 across, combined like terms, so 0.12a minus 0.05a gives you 0.07a equals 3. Divide, and a is about 42.9 pounds. Substitute that in. And for b, you're going to get about 57.1 pounds. So feed a, you need 42.9. And feed b, you need 57.1 pounds. And that ends our lesson on using algebraic methods to solve linear systems.